<clears throat> hey guys, I'm finally getting my video posted today, and hopefully I'll get it posted before YouTube does their scheduled maintenance crap. But the topic that Fran and I are talking about today is depression and eating disorders. And the question that was asked was, does depression cause an eating disorder, or does an eating disorder cause depression? That's kind of a double-barreled question, because both can be true, and sometimes both are true. Sometimes people are depressed and they have an eating disorder and that may be how they cope with the depression. Um, and then an eating disorder can also add, add or cause depression because if your body's not getting nourished properly, then your brain doesn't work properly and your hormones start to wig out and you can have depression. So, but actually, I think that eating disorders, a lot of times, people that have eating disorders tend to be more anxiety prone, and anxiety and depression, they kind of go hand in hand, so, um, so they sometimes coexist together, and oftentimes, oftentimes they do. So, you know, it's kind of hard to say, because... Eating di there is research that shows that people with eating disorders have a higher propensity towards anxiety. And I would say that eating disorders can cause depression because it's, pr I mean, let's face it, it's a pretty depressing state to be in. And sometimes we don't even realize how depressed we are when we're in it until we get a little bit further along in recovery and we look back and... I mean, like, I look back now to where I was two years ago, and it's just like, bleh. Like, who wants to be there? But at the time, you know, that's where I was, and that's, and I thought that's where, I, I don't know if I thought that's where I wanted to be, but I didn't really want to change. I did want to, but I didn't want to, and... There was a part of me that knew I needed to change, but I think the biggest part of me then thought that I couldn't live another way and that I was okay, and really what I was doing was numbing out, and numbing out the depression and the anxiety. <clears throat> but you can only do that for so long, and yeah, it does, the eating disorder does cause depression, because if all you can think about is your eating disorder and to the expense of everything else, then... You've, you're isolating yourself, self, and even if you go to work and you see people mentally, you're isolating yourself because you can't focus on the other things around you, and your brain's not working properly because of the malnutrition, and there's just so many things that can lead to depression, and depression is such a complex illness anyway. My view on mental illnesses is that I think... I think we know so little about them that we kind of cluster symptoms and then we put a label on it, but we don't really know, you know, what causes those symptoms. So one person, it maybe it's a chemical thing and that, you know, there's something organically wrong in their brain that's causing it. Somebody else, like my husband, for example, he's allergic to grapefruit and he didn't know this for years, but one of the symptoms that he had when he ate grapefruit when he was younger is that he would get severely, severely depressed. And he figured out, I don't know how he figured out the connection, but um, now he avoids grapefruit and he doesn't really have problems with depression. But if he accidentally gets something with grapefruit juice in it, um, he gets just like his mood and everything gets violent. And, you know, he's not a violent person, but he just gets extremely depressed for a few days. So it's... You know, it's hard to know. There's so many factors that can affect it. And I would say if you have an eating disorder, you're probably not in a good healthy state because you have an eating disorder. And something that led you to develop an eating disorder, um, to me that means there was probably something going on beforehand that led you to that. Um, but it can go either way. So and it's just, it's... It's trial and error, and that's part of the problem. It's like my, you know, my like my doctor says about my medication because we've had such a hard time finding something that works for long term. And you know, it's not like you had high blood pressure, you can 
say take this medication and it'll help it with depression and anxiety there's just it's all trial and error you don't you can't look in the brain and say okay this medication is going to fix it blah blah, blah. okay you're fine wish it could do that we're ge we're getting technology that is hopeful and showing um things that can help like biofeedback is just there's there's a lot of amazing things going on with um neuropsychology and changing brain pathways with neurofeedback um which is exciting because uh, there are some people that are experiencing long-term benefits without having to be on medication or being able to minimize their medication and you know it may not work for everybody just because there's so much we don't know but but there's a lot out there there's a lot of research and there's a lot of hope I think that with the new stuff that's coming out we're far beyond the days when everybody was put into an institution and I think I think that's that's good we're we're making progress and and one of the things you know we're creating awareness of mental illness but we need to we're still very underfunded we don't have a, I have good health insurance and my insurance covers my treatment but that's not how it is for the majority of people even people that have health insurance a lot of times their mental health care benefits are not as high or non-existent because they don't consider it in the same category when really mental illness is usually organically based at least to some degree and um, there really is no difference because you can't separate the mind from the body and you really don't know what's going on and there is there's something going on and just because we don't understand it it doesn't mean it isn't there so any who's I hope you have a great week and try and get this posted before the YouTube maintenance people take down the site for a few hours otherwise it'll be posted probably tomorrow because I probably won't be able to post it after then so See you next week.